organizers. Uh, it's an honor to be here and a uh, very wonderful town setting for uh, mathematics. So um, I'm going to talk about a uh, uh, project that um, to find a, maybe a polynomial that uh, hasn't um, been studied before. Um, and I don't know if this is the correct name or not, but this is what we called it. We called it the as, um, polynomial. This is a joint with um, Ben Elias um, and Godfoot. And um, we got some help um, computing wise from uh, Ben. Yeah. He is a co author of the appendix. <laughs> so, um, uh, I uh, came at this project from kind of a completely different angle. And, um, and we originally uh, computed this polynomial via some um, cohomology that I'll write down later. Uh, but I think it's nice to present it um, uh, combinatorially first because you can define it combinatorially. Um, and there's some interesting combinatorics there. So, um, so I'm going to start with combinatorics. Um, and then I'll, I'll very briefly um, just say a few things about the um, uh, cause deterministic polynomial representation theory. Um, uh, just to highlight the similarities, and then I'll say uh, on geometry. And then last, uh, if we have time, I'll talk about some algebra. Okay, so combinatorics. Um, I'm going to have M, this to be a matroid. Um, this is my ground set, and these are my independent sets. So, um, and I'm going to make L or L of M be my lattice of flats. And I'll have I of T. This is you know, characteristic volume. <coughs> Define my polynomial, I need some restriction um, and localization. So this is going to be restriction. Uh, as a matroid, this is, and because we haven't seen this yet, I should write it down. So I just take out um, everything in the flat, and then my um, uh, independent sets are uh, when I union, I get an independent set that I had before. Here, this is okay. 
Okay, so I'm calling this my restriction. Yeah, the, the um, localization is deletion of everything outside the the, the flag. bad way to organize the talk, but I'm giving the com combinatorics first, and it might look uh, boring and absurd, but uh, as time goes on, hopefully it will not. So, uh, for M is a matroid, uh, there is a polynomial. This satisfies three things. Um, if the rank is uh, zero, then <coughs> this is equal to polynomial is one. Um, if the rank is uh, greater than zero, rank greater than zero, then the degree is strictly less than the rank of the two. And then there's a recurrence that looks like this. The sum over all flats multiply the characteristic polynomial of the localization times <laughs> restriction okay um, so uh, you can prove this combinatorially and if you look on the right hand side here um, this is over all Flats. So in particular, the empty flat. Um, and so if you look at the localization of the empty flat, so this guy is just one, and then the restriction is everything. So actually, the um, uh, polynomial itself that you're trying to define is, is, is on both sides of this equation. So really, it looks like the same thing looks like this. kind of a curious lemma and I'm wondering if anybody's seen this before. Um, if you sum overall flats, uh, T rank, you multiply these characteristic polynomials, sum this all together, this is zero. I thought that was just kind of leave itself. Okay, so what are some nice properties of this thing? This is this these properties uniquely define the polynomial? Yes. Because um, so what you need to say, if you look at this equation, um, what you need to say is that this thing over here is uh, written uh, backwards and then forwards. <laughs> so it's a conundrum, I guess, with the uh, right coefficients. Okay, 
so one nice property um, is that it's multiplicative. So Um, so this immediately gives you the first example. Right, so M N is the Boolean. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, then it's all meals equal to one because it's a direct product. Uh, okay, so now I'd like to, um, uh, I like getting my hands dirty and computing things, so I'd like to uh, look at it, show you a couple of the first few coefficients in general. So both of the terms. And uh, when we get to this section on geometry, I think it's, it's pretty neat that you can compute these low degree terms um, with some well known or semi well known uh, combinatorial numbers. Uh, okay, so first thing I need to tell you is the um, zeta function. This just tells me when things, um, it's kind of a, then there's, uh, Things called doubly indexed Whitney numbers of the second kind. Um, and we use various other different kinds of numbers, but I'm only going to use these in the path. Um, the first kind of um, so these guys like this. And um, if that looks funny, you can really just think of all less than or equal pairs at, at particular ranks in the intersection on this you know, last flats. Okay, um, so with that, uh, let's write down some uh, coefficients. So um, one, the constant coefficient. is always Um, the linear term is uh, uh, let's see, I didn't find the rank was it, but let's just um, maybe I'll write that. that for the rest of the talk. So if the rank is um, uh, D, then I'm looking at all my one less rank 
flats minus all the atoms, the number of all the atoms. Um, you could just take away the zero here. That's sort of. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. It's ordinary Whitney numbers by setting i equal to zero. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if I set i equal to zero, this is just all the stuff, right? I put, right? I put the empty set here, and then um, this is all the stuff that uh, is about it in that particular rank. So it's literally just. The, but you get the same thing if i is equal to zero. Yes. Yes. That's right. Okay, uh, and we'll write the third one quadratic. This. So if I skip around here, so this is. So um, why am I writing all this down? It looks technical and uh, boring. But um, there's a couple of neat consequences. So first of all, there is what's called the hyperplane theorem. <coughs> This is the Alan Wilson version I'm going to write down. Um, although I should write down many other authors, I suppose. Um, but uh, two things. Uh, and I'm just going to leave out the zeros here, OK? So this And you have equality if and only if m is modular. Now, so what does that give us? This gives us that. So the linear coefficient is positive. look at k equal to 1, I, I have um, the first guy is smaller than this. Max, what's the what's modular matrix? Modular means the um, uh, it's still still modular still. Right. So it means that for all um, You have equality. For all. Yeah. For all uh, those plots. Yeah. Is there an example besides the U? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Space subspace, yeah. Huh? Oh, All subspaces of some Yeah. The Q Yeah, I don't know. Um, so 
that's that, but from here, if we dig a little more with this um, modularity, uh, we can get the following. Our equivalent. So it, this polynomial is actually equal to 1. There's no added in terms. So linear coefficient is equal to 0. <coughs> And three, it's modular. Okay, so how about this quadratic term? I wrote this, I wrote this in a specific way. So if you look at this term, yeah, these are doubly indexed, and there's no, um, at least I couldn't find through the literature the, uh, the, um, any kind of theorem about inequalities of doubly indexed Whitney numbers. But um, if you were to expand this and write it as terms, um, you can see that these are the top terms and these are the bottom terms um, once restricted. So really, this is a positive version of the hyperplane theorem. Right? Because the d minus 3 is fixed. Here, the 1's are fixed. But now the top has the negative coefficient. And the, the bottom has the positive. So this is actually negative of the hyperplane theorem. So we know this is always non-negative. We know this is always non-positive. This term is one particular term of what's called the top heaviness conjecture, which looks as if you were to take the corresponding term within this sum. So I think it's kind of neat that um, each of these terms appears in a specific way. And um, more importantly, what I'm going to say later is that for any representable matroid, all of this is positive. So whatever is negative here gets kind of eaten up by this and this. And whatever could possibly be negative here is balanced out by those guys. Uh, any questions? In part one, is, is there an analog, sorry, prop, proposition part one? Yes. So sorry. for the casualistic polynomials, that's like the Mobius function in Bruhauer order is plus or minus one. What does it correspond to here? Um, that's a good question. Uh, if you um, just trace through the recurrence, um, well, there's a few different ways to say that. If you just trace through the recurrence, it pops out. Um, or uh, this thing, um, or what I'm about to say, is, is the Poincare, po Poincare polynomial of, uh, of some cohomology. So um, that first coefficient is always one. The constant. I don't think I answered your question, though. Okay. All right. A um, couple of uh, examples. Um, Let's let uh, MP be the uniform matroid of rank D on M plus D elements. Um, so there's, you can think, uh, 
So m isn't the number of elements. M is the, uh, the, the number more than d in m. OK, so uh, this is maybe a little technical. Um, but if you write the generating function down, so I'm going to fix m now, and I'm going to uh, vary d. So I'm going to sum So I'm fixing m, and I'm looking at this generating function. There is a um, nice uh, equality. And um, the details aren't important here, but um, I'd like to just point it out. Okay. So, so here's this um, recursion for this uh, generating function, and. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is, right now, we can't do a lot more than that, but we can do that. <laughs> um, so it's, it's kind of a statement that, yes, you can play with that recursion combinatorially, but does it easily give you a formula for the coefficients? No. So unfortunately, we don't, at the moment, and we have some conjectures, and this is kind of in-progress work, about um, the coefficients of this guy. Um, and we could uh, write down, you know, for example, various terms, and I've written down to degree 3 um, and 4, and there's nice formulas, and you can define things for, instead of uh, doubly indexed, uh, multi-indexed, and then you have formulas and products of binomial coefficients and things. And, uh, if you're really good with generating functions, um, I suppose you could probably uh, do some things with this. But the other uh, co-author, we ran some, we, we have a formula for m equal to 1, and we ran some uh, computer proof uh, and it worked, but uh, I'm trying to get the by hand proof. So it's fun. Uh, one interesting point is um, a nice conjecture here. Uh, the top term, that's degree a minus 1 of. m equal to 1 is the Kevin. end of the symmetry spectrum, I suppose, uh, at least in an arrangement perspective. So the brain matroid of rank n minus 1. Um, here we have the, uh, let's call it, um, Psi. Psi. And uh, 
this is to the n minus 1 to make things work right. Um, this guy has a similar formula, um, but this time uh, it's messier. number of partitions and the sum over all number of partitions. This guy is the number of uh, set partitions with that <coughs> with those size parts. And this guy is add one to each part of V and then this. And again, the details here are super important. I'm just again writing it down to show you how good slash bad it can get. function times some kind of uh, funny evaluation of my generating function. And here, I have my usual generating function, but now I'm taking some derivatives of it multiplied times something. Um, and the sum is kind of way worse. Uh, but there is um, some other interesting things in this case. So for example, these doubly index Whitney numbers are just products of Sterling numbers. So I could write all these coefficients now in terms of Sterling numbers. Uh, Is it for braid arrangement or for all? Just braid arrangement. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, and maybe last, there's a, another conjecture here. The uh, top term of and to K is Coefficients are all positive. And um, moreover, uh, they form a log concave. It's pretty to get a computer to write big tables of the families and then and then see the log concavity nicely. Okay, so that's the combinatorics portion. Uh, I think I might have to cut the G 
geometry portion. Uh, so. So, uh, split this up into combinatorics also. Um, so, W is a top square group, um, and X and Y and W, um, the cos diamond station polynomial. So, this is just a brief review, just to show you in general why the use the name that we did, um, is um, I'm not going to actually use anything from this, sir. It's just to show you the analogy. Um, T satisfies. So, uh, four. It's not equal to zero. Um, and this one you can relate to the to our original polynomial as um, to our to to our polynomial as you can kind of think in the lattice of flats, if you had two things um, in the lattice of flats, well, you could look at the restricted and localized arrangement and then define such a thing. Okay? Well, if they're not um, uh, less than or equal to each other, then I'm not going to get anything. Um, So you mean that here you have a dry interval and there you have an interval of uh, flats. Right. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I don't know if that's some kind of um, and okay, time wise I don't think I'm going to write this down but there is some hue to the something <laughs> uh, Okay, so these are some combinatorial redefined polynomials. <clears throat> and so the recursion looks uh, very different. So this D operator um, switches Q. Uh, to the one half power with q to the negative one half power. is here if you have a top sphere system. 
And you have a heck algebra. Some ring the coefficients. So I'm just doing the one parameter version. Um, so this is a deformation of the group ring. Um, there's a natural basis. by elements in the group. And then there's the mystic basis theorem. Which says that uh, uh, if you write these guys, This is an involution um, invariant basis. So the, the last section of my talk was to define um, an algebra um, and uh, give a natural basis for it and then um, define another basis and show that, um, just look at some examples and show the similarity. It's an evolution that sends Q to Q minus 1 and TY yes. to TY inverse inverse, right? <coughs> yes. Okay. So here's the geometry. is that this guy is equal to the Funker polynomial of the intersection cohomology so this is this means um, the intersection cohomology um, at any uh, stock, at any point in x of y, and these are the um, Schubert uh, varieties. Um, so this is what I'm going to say next in my talk for the analog for our setting. Okay. Um, Maybe I should just give the answer. Uh, and let's give the answer. So this is in um, representation theory where these guys are the Schubert varieties. And um, for us, it looks like this. And I'm going to say M is, let's state it for C representable. Okay. 
that looks very similar. Let's sum over i dimension. And here, it's because we're over c, it's uh, global. And um, maybe I'll write it like this. <coughs> So um, what is this? First of all, let me tell you what this is. So OT is the Orlick algebra. Uh, A, which is a representation This is, uh, you can write as um, inverting all the linear forms. So A is, I'm going to view it as a hyperplane arrangement. So I have the Euler algebra. I compute its spec. I don't compute it, but I compute the. Um, I want to compute the intersection cohomology on that um, affine variety, and this is called. This de de depends on the representation of n, let's say? Uh, good question. No. Does it? Well, yeah, I mean, so it's the, implicit the, in the theorem, but. I don't know about the ring structure. Maybe it's a ring structure, but. Because yeah, but this is, this is a correlator here. Yeah. So that's. Um, right, so this is kind of the main. What I just wrote was our main theory. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, I should write that. What's the mean there? Um, so and it looks, um, what do I really mean by the main theorem? I mean that, that this um, polynomial satisfies that recursion that I wrote down in the very first um, slide. So, um, I, let's see, what should I tell you here? I can maybe say a little bit of the ingredients. Um, okay, so, so maybe. This is the way you prove the positivity for the, I mean, this implies the positivity. Exactly, right. So that conjecture we proved now for um, and it's not just representable over C, it's representable over any um, field um, the coverages are positive. Okay. You said M is C representable. Right. But you're saying the pair holds even if M is just representable at all? Right. Or the positivity holds? Or the uh, I need to alter what chief I'm talking about and yeah. but yeah. So 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 in some sense the the, the, the I mean the usual statement, the statement that you have written on the top of the blackboard uh, was for vial uh, groups, right? So it's yes. like vial group correspond to 
you realize you're going to drag some of these pedals over. Yes. Yeah. Is this uh, XMB a toy or anything? Uh, yeah. Um, yes. So you can. Uh, uh, I don't know. I should uh, wait before I answer that question. Is, yeah. is XMB a torque array? But. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, let me just. So, am I supposed to end now, or <laughs> in ten minutes? Well, yeah, we have still. Uh, yeah, eight, ten minutes. Eight, ten minutes. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, okay. I'll end it after. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Four thirty. Four thirty. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Yeah. Let me just tell you a couple of the um, uh, ingredients to this proof. Um, first of all, there's uh, a result of the inspire that gives this uh, gives the stratification of this of things that look like localizations. I'm writing this like they're common there. Um, there's uh, the kind of key lemma um, which was kind of fun to figure this out. Um, we couldn't figure it out and we couldn't even figure out some extremely simple case of this. Stratum uh, we couldn't figure out an extremely simple case of this and uh, you know it boils down to just computing some um, isomorphism of local rings or uh, rings of power series and we stated a question on math overflow and there was um, uh, a few uh, answers that gave us some uh, uh, ideas, and then um, uh, it, it was kind of nice to use math overflow and get ideas and then find an answer to that. And it, it kind of came from uh, another one, of the kind of crucial piece was um, if you took the following rings. And you localize them. These two rings are actually isomorphic. And by E, I mean the uh, elementary symmetric polynomial. So that was kind of cool. Um, <coughs> And then, uh, then you have um, that. Uh, 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 well, I'll just write that equals zero. Um, if i is greater than dimension of x. And I'm writing this because, I'm writing some of these ingredients because then you can uh, look at our original definition and see where those assumptions came for, right? Because I have right, things only in odd degree and right, this is equal to zero for bigger than the dimension of x, that gives us our degree bound. Um, and uh, and then um, we have a kind of uh, theorem from Krauf uh, and Webster which has a bunch of hypotheses and we had to kind of 
uh, change this theorem around um, for our setting, but uh, um, lot of hypothesis, which included um, the fact that if if you had an uh, affine um, variety that had a stratification and um, uh, each of these guys had a uh, polynomial count. And I'm not sure that this was what you were talking about um, in the first lecture today. But, uh, so i.e. the size of x. So this is, now I'm talking about things over finite fields here. Um, Uh, then you can conclude that recursion. So this is this is the theorem where the recursion comes from. So x So this is a kind of um, abstract version of that um, uh, recursion for uh, some varieties over a finite field that satisfy uh, a list of hypotheses that I don't have time to, to, to talk about. Um, but I was the last section, algebra, obviously I'm not going to cover. But uh, maybe I should just say that um, the corresponding algebra is the Mobius algebra of the lattice of flats. And the Q defor deformation is you just, uh, when you multiply, so in the original uh, Mobius algebra, you take um, flats and then take their join. Um, and in the, uh, in our deformed, and we don't really know if this is the right definition, but uh, um, we, you take and sum over all things higher than the join. And then you add a power of q plus the Mobius function times um, each of those factors. And then this thing turns out to be uh, commutative and associative, and it has a nice looking unit. And then, um, uh, and then we can write down a Kozdan-Lustig basis and uh, uh, look at how to interpolate between the two bases and have product formulas and things. All right, so, grazie.